these are the top 10 centre-backs to sign in Football Manager 2023, at least according to me. In today's video, let's go through them and then you can go and sign them and you can keep all of the clean sheets. Hello, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm considering the best centre-backs for you to sign in Football Manager 2023. In fact, I've put them into a little bit of a list, a top 10 that you can see on the screen right now, except for the fact you can't really see them because their faces are blurred out. I will reveal who each of these 10 players are, going through why I've chosen them to be in my top 10, how you can go and sign them, how effective they are, how they turn out in a few years in a save as well, as well as including a few of your suggestions too. I put out a tweet asking for you guys to suggest which centre-back's been best for you, and it seems like a lot of your suggestions aligned with the players that I found most effective as well, which is interesting, maybe because they fit the profile of defender that seems to be most effective in Football Manager, maybe because, maybe for a different reasons. Who knows? Let's get into my top 10, and before we do that, if you think this is the type of video that would be really useful for you, if you think this is your type of thing, make sure you do subscribe to the channel because there's plenty more where this one came from. Let's go and do all of the other positions, right? I can go and do the wing wingers and fullbacks and centre mids. We've done a few of them in the past too. So without further ado, let's get into it. In at number 10 is this man here. It's Mukhtar Diakabi. I actually included Diakabi in my top five bargains video right back at the start of FM23 and... I think that's possibly why he's made it into my top 10 defenders here. He is so reliable and he's really, really cheap, especially if you're one of those top teams. You can get him for about 10 million pounds. This is him in my Newcastle save. So 2025, a few years into the save and he's still at Valencia actually, which is where he starts off. He's played a whole heap of games for them. Playing regularly, look, still in La Liga. He turns into a, just a very solid defender. Not exactly going to pull up too many stops. He's just six foot four and good at being a defender. Mainly he's got into my top 10 because he's really, really cheap. He's, he's really good. I like him a lot. Mukhtar Diakabi comes in at number 10. He's actually French in this save. I think he's chosen to play for Guinea in real life, if I am correct in that one. This is Diakabi. He's in at number 10 and because he's a bargain and he's great. Oh, I should mention as well, by the way, this is very much my top 10 and it's my top 10 players that I suggest you go and sign. So some of the really, really top centre-backs, let's think Virgil van Dijk and Imeric Laporte, for example, are obviously going to be brilliant in Football Manager. However, I don't suggest you go and sign them because they're going to cost so much money and they're not very gettable. Most teams, you can't go and sign those players. So these are very much my top 10 centre-backs that I think you should go and sign. For example, Diakabi is so easy to go and sign. That's why he makes my top 10. The players that we go through in this top 10 hopefully will fit that profile as well. You will see. So just as a bit of a disclaimer there. Also, they're very much my choices. I'm happy for you to suggest them down in the comments down below as well. We can create a bigger list of all these players where if you've clicked on this video to find the best centre-backs to come and sign, have a look in the comments down below as well. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of extra really good players in there that I've not put into my top 10. That's fine. Let's go through to number nine. In at number nine is a player that was highly suggested by you guys over on Twitter. It's Anul Amadhozic, who in the Newcastle save here in 2025 is playing at Hertha Berlin and is now 26 years old. You can see why he's been highly suggested. Somebody that I've signed plenty of times this year, as well as in previous FMs too, where he was also brilliant. This year though, especially, he makes my list because he actually starts off at Sheffield United, of course, in the championship, meaning I think he's a little bit more gettable, viable than some of these other players. You should be able to, be able to get him for a slightly cheaper price in this save here, three seasons in 43 million pounds. He's gone to head to Berlin. I think you can get him cheaper than that towards the start. He was a Premier League player by that time as well. But have a look at him as a player. Six foot three, decent acceleration and pace here a couple of years in. Great personality of perfectionist too. Great heading. He's got all of the attributes that you want for a defender. He fits the meta, which I know annoys you when I say this word. I'm sorry, right? But there is a meta. Big, tall, fast and strong for centre-backs is the best ones that you can get obviously with things like good positioning and tackling and all the other things too marking and concentration as well as those ones too of course Ahmed Hozic has all of these the young Bosnian is a great player to pick up he's in at number nine 
In at number eight is a real personal favourite of mine. He was definitely in the top 10 for FM22 centre-backs, and he's made the top 10 of FM23 ones as well. It's Pau Torres at Villarreal. He's actually still at Villarreal. Three seasons in here, although have a look at this for a value. £115 million is now his value at this stage. He's a left-footed centre-back, which, by the way, just as an aside here, I do like to have a left-footed left centre-back and a right-footed right centre-back, especially, I mean, at the very least, you want one that prefers to be on each side and is playing on their natural side. That's something I would look at, and that's why I've included some left-footers and some right-footers in this top 10. Pau Torres is one of the better left-footed centre-backs for me. He is, he's everything you look for. Six foot three, good acceleration, really good pace, 16. Jumping reach is excellent too, at 17. Good marking, good tackling, good positioning. I feel like I'm going to repeat myself on going through these attributes, but that's why they've made the top 10 list. He's at Villarreal as well, which means, is he gettable? Yes, although he will cost you maybe slightly more than some of the other players on this list, but he's definitely worth that money. Once you go through, once you're a Champions League team, I think go and pick up Pau Torres and you're not going to regret it, are you? He is really, really good. He's in at number eight. Let's move through to number seven. At number seven, it's the first of our players that I've actually signed in this save that I'm using to showcase the players. It's Antonio Silva, who starts the game, of course, at Benfica, the young Portuguese centre-back. His main benefit, really, is the fact he's got age on his side. He's only 21 here. We're three seasons in, so he starts this game at 18 years old, and he's got so much room to grow still as well, and he's already a brilliant Premier League centre-back at this stage. He's a bit like, he reminds me of Ruben Diaz. He's like a young Ruben Diaz, maybe just because he's Portuguese, but I think in the way that his profile looks as well. I picked him up in this save for £20 million, which was an absolute bargain. I think he might be slightly more expensive since the update, and he's a little bit more difficult to get. Of course, he's also, I think, only just signed a new contract at Benfica at the start of the game, so you might have to wait a little bit, but I was lucky enough to get him in early in this save, and he's not really let me down. He's been a very, very solid defender despite his young age. Six foot two as well. I'm going to mention their heights, aren't I? But he's got a lot of room to grow, and he's going to become even better than this. I think he's fantastic. Antonio Silva in at number seven. Lots of you agreed with this one. Let's move towards... Number six, Big Bad Badiashile is number six on the list. Benoit Badiashile, who's just sealed his move to Chelsea in real life. So they've obviously liked what they've seen. He's pretty good in FM as well, is Badiashile. He is, he's everything I look for in a centre-back. He is pretty quick, 14 acceleration, 14 pace in this save here. Still at Monaco, which is where he starts off the game. In fact, it's where he's played his entire career before moving on to Chelsea in real life. So actually, as I suggest you go and sign him, this might be your last chance to go and sign him. He's going to be a little bit more difficult to pick up from Chelsea than he is from Monaco, of course. But have a look at the jumping reach. Six, uh, 18 jumping reach, I should say. I'm selling him short there. And he's not short because he's six foot four. 18 strength as well, which I think does make a big difference, by the way, about whether they're going to win those near post headers and score you those goals. Badia Shile scores so many goals when I sign him with those near post headers, towering headers at the near post. 18 strength, I think, probably plays a big part in that, a big role in that. I would say too. Another left-footed one. So that one to tick off on the box if that's what you're looking for too. At Monaco, so he's gettable. Big bad bad Yashile in at number six. Now we need to look at my top five. And in at number five is a big hitter. It's Alessandro Bastoni. I'm pretty sure this guy was right towards the top of my list of centre-backs in FM22. He might even have been number one. I can't remember, but he was definitely towards the top. He is sensational. The only reason that he's number five this year is is it's definitely not because he's not very good. He's still brilliant in FM23. It's just because I think he's a little bit more difficult to go and sign. Probably because of his reputation has grown that much more since last year. He's become that little bit better that year older. He's now 20 three at the start of the game so he's still a young defender but just have a look at this profile i've signed him for so many different teams over the past couple of years he never lets you down in fact he gets better and better he is now very expensive though that's why he's only number five but another left footer 16 strength stamina natural fitness up there as well which means you could probably play him at left back actually if you wanted to go full center backs across the back four which rafa benitez did that once i seem to remember he's good at passing as that ball playing at defender too great tackling great marking all of the attributes that you need in there as well as being i think his mentals really make him a cut above a few of those other center backs that we look at his anticipation bravery I love Alessandro Bastoni. I would recommend it. If you can get him, definitely try and get him. He will cost you quite a lot of money, though. And quite rightly, he's brilliant. 
Let's go through to number four. In at number four is the beautiful Ukrainian Ilya Zabanyi, who has moved to Atletico Madrid in this save, it seems. Three seasons into this save, 2025, he's now an Atletico Madrid centre-back, which I think you have to be a good defender to move to Atletico Madrid. He has played all of their games. They signed him for £15 million as well. He starts the save, or starts the game, I should say, at Dinamo Kiev in Ukraine, giving him that bargain potential. You can go and pick him up from a team that has a lower reputation for cheap and he will not let you down. This guy is a god. Again, very good mentally, which I think holds him higher than some of those other defenders that we've looked at. Really good physicals too. He's tall, six foot two. He's got good jumping reach. He's not slow either. 14 acceleration, 15 pace in this save here. I should also mention, if the players look slightly different in your saves, that's maybe because I'm three seasons in and also because some of these will have variable potential abilities and, they're cut and you get different roles of the dice don't you for players so just bear that in mind when you, you're looking at your players too i'm just showing you how they've turned out in my save which isn't where i've tried to make them really good it's literally just the save that i played for three seasons to give you hopefully an authentic look at what these players are going to look like zabani though highly highly recommended by me in at number four and i think he deserves it really like him he is our fourth best defender this now get serious is the top three yo sip Sitalo comes in at number three on my list and i think with good reason he is a bit of a newcomer actually he's definitely not in my top 10 list last year in fm22 but he deserves his place in fm23 he is another one of those that is quite young he's 22 i think at the start of the game and he also has that bargain potential because he starts his career off at dinamo zagreb in fm23 meaning you can go and grab him from there for a reasonable fee spurs went and did this in this save for 15 million pounds i think that is an absolute bargain you're getting this defender for about 15 million pounds i would highly highly recommend it he's right footed so he's one of those right sided ones you can go and pair him with another one of those left footed footers from my my list here and you would have definitely a champions league competing defense there he's easily a premier league level defender for a very cheap amount of money loads of good pros on him too he's got great marking great tackling good positioning as well as those decent physicals not the fastest of the players we've looked at but he does have that height and that jumping reach which is of course very important especially for me this is my number three most recommended defender of fm23 or center back i should say josip Sitalo, the first of a few croatians that i could recommend and do you know what this is a bonus one just because we're here and he's got the same surname bosco sitalo not his brother by the way although i feel like they maybe they are are they are they lying also from zagreb he's also not bad himself if you can't get yosip go and get bosco he's not my number two pick he didn't make my top 10 but he's also pretty good there's a bonus one for you let's move through to number two and at number two it's another Croatian. This is why I mentioned how Croatia had such good defenders. It's Josko Guardiol, who has revolutionized my defense in this Newcastle save. He is so good. It was actually a really difficult decision about which player I go for as number one out of my top two here. And hopefully you'll be able to see why. Got Guardiol coming in. I think, I mean, if you've watched the Newcastle save, you know what he did to this defense. You know how much better we became in that final season. He is so good. I mean, he's really good in real life. He's going to get that big move from Leipzig to maybe a Premier League team eventually. I mean, Leipzig are not bad themselves, are they? He starts there in FM23, of course, and you can go and buy him for probably quite a lot of money. I've paid 70 million, but that was in three seasons. So maybe a little bit cheaper towards the start, but he's every penny worth that money too. another left footer he's got so much pace but he's not small either at six foot one he's got decent jumping reach as well which makes him the perfect defender for me you can also go and play left back naturally as well which is really useful actually when you're squad building too josco guardiol i don't need to say too much more about him really i know that loads of you signed him in fm 22 and 21 and maybe even 20 before that right he's been a bit of a wonder kid for a while now and he is really young as well of course he does have that potential ability and that potential to grow on his side starting at 20 years old in a new game so josco guardiol easily easily in my top two could even have been number one but i've saved number one for this player it's his center back partner in my newcastle save it's giorgio scalvini if you've watched this Newcastle save I'll say it again you know how good this guy has been for us I think he is the best defender he's the best center back on FM23 because he is 
only he's so young at the start of the game i think 18 years old at the start of fm23 he can grow into a worldie of a center back he's six foot four he fits my meta in that regard he's got that jumping reach he's got that stamina that strength the mentals are really good this is three seasons in where he has improved a little bit but i think he's still got room to grow you know it says here he's got a little bit of potential to go to as well only 21 years old three seasons in you can pick him up from atalanta for i mean i picked him up for 41.5 million pounds which is a bargain i know that is a lot of money right and lots of you will be thinking that for your saves if you're a lower league team for example but for what you're getting with scalvini he is so so good so cheap for that money so good i mean i don't know what else to say about him really he's been revolutionary for this defense i signed him first season he's made us into the team that we are can't recommend him highly enough he is my number one player that i think you should go and sign for center back on fm23 go and sign him giorgio scalvini from atalanta if you agree with this let me know in the comments down below but more importantly if you disagree with this let me know in those comments down below i want to know who who would make your top three for FM23. Don't just give me one player's name. Give me your top three and we can compare them in those comments down below. And if you've enjoyed this video and you are looking forward to videos of this nature in the future, make sure you do subscribe to the channel because I'm going to go and bring you those wingers and those center mids and those fullbacks and maybe even those goalkeepers. What do you want to see next? Let me know in the comments too. Let's continue through this. And whilst you're here, might as well stick around because might as well go and watch this video, which is my top 10 strikers for FM23, right? That'll be helpful too. See you in a bit.